Welcome back to the Changemaker Podcast. I'm your host, Deke Copenhaver. To get, today, my guest is Adam Rod. Ada is an Arab U.S. based impact artist whose mission is to help people feel seen, heard, and loved through art. She paints with her fingers due to a past trauma. She became an artist because she had rheumatoid arthritis. They say the darker the shadow, the brighter the light. Her rheumatoid arthritis was her shadow, her art is her light and serves as a light for others. When she was 20 years old, she was diagnosed with her shadow and subsequently semi-paralyzed for four and a half years. When she was in a place of suffering, she turned to art to help her heal. However, she didn't paint with paintbrushes. She painted only with her hands to demonstrate to herself and to the world she is not damaged and this dysmorphia will not define her. And we're going to get into all your accomplishments and you're just absolutely amazing. But ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Ada. Welcome to the Changemaker podcast, hosted by Deke Copeneva. Deke is the author of The Changemaker, a Forbes publishing book that has reached number one on Amazon on multiple occasions and in multiple categories like management skills and total quality management. During this podcast, Deke interviews exceptional change-making leaders. Deke currently operates Copenhaver Consulting, where he helps local governments and other public organizations maximize their potential. He's also a sought-after public speaker. We hope that the change-maker has an impact on you today and that you find takeaways that make you a better leader in your life. Now, here's Deke. Thank you, Deke. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, we had the best conversation offline before coming online, but you are such, learning your story, you are such an inspiration to me and so many others. And I was telling my wife last night, I said, I can't imagine to being semi-paralyzed for four and a half years, just the, you know, the uncharted waters and not knowing, am I ever going to get back to being what I was before? I would say you're much more than you were before, but just tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, thank you. So it, it's, um, I think it all happened much earlier than my actual physical diagnosis. So I grew up in Jordan, but I started working when I was 13 years old. I just love building, love business. But what society taught me is to be an A-type, but almost to the point where it led to d destruction in my heart. And yeah. because I was stressed all the time, I, when I was in college, I actually thought sleep was for the week. I genuinely hated sleeping every night because wow. I thought it was a waste of time. And long story short, I was working 40 hours a week. I was wanted to be an A plus student. And I also wanted to fit in every social group. So that's where sleep, my hate with with sleep, and, and I rarely use the word hate, but I genuinely hated sleep, <laughs> came in and I kept saying by my junior year, senior year of college, I just need a break. I need a break. And our words are very powerful, especially yeah. when they're backed with emotion. So that's when I believe I attracted that harshness of I got my break. I was semi-paralyzed and I couldn't get out yeah. of bed. So I had to quit college. Um, I did graduate, but just with an easier major. I stopped seeing any of my friends because I was ashamed to be vulnerable and be weak, quote unquote. And then I had to quit my job that I worked so hard to get. Um, and I was also too proud to tell my parents that I was so sick that I ended up selling everything I owned to pay for the doctor bills because I didn't go to my family for help. Uh, so I learned a lot from this experience and we can dive in more, but that's kind of the framing of how it all started. So had you been an artist growing up? No, I, uh, so the funny thing, I, I, I love looking at children and what are they attracted to naturally? So as a child, I naturally stared at art. I just loved looking at abstract art specifically. My both my grandmothers are self-taught artists and their mothers, but I'm the first professional artist, self-taught as well. 
but I never painted until my paralysis, which is really funny and ironic. But I just, again, going back to societal narratives, there are no, there, I had no examples that being an artist, a professional artist was a possibility. I had examples that being, okay, what will take me, what, what will make the world take me more seriously? Oh, it's being in finance, an engineer, a doctor, or an economist. So I chose to be an economist because I thought that's what would make me successful. You know, it's, it's interesting because what you said about um, in your bio, that you are on a mission to help people feel seen, heard, and loved through your art. And to me, and I talk on this show so often, that's leadership. You know, I think we sometimes we get confused with bullying, people using fear and intimidation to get their desired outcome. But leadership is about making people feel safe, secured, loved, and that their voices are heard. So you're leading through your art. But it's interesting, too. I was telling my wife yesterday about how excited I was to be able to interview you today. And she said, you guys have so much in common. But she asked me again this morning, she's like, you still excited? And I said, oh, yeah. So I grew up writing and painting and, you know, exposed to an art space and education. But I share with people that that taught me, you know, and I didn't want to go into politics. I wanted to write for Rolling Stone. But so being exposed to an art space education, though, Help me learn creative problem solving, which I applied, you know, I still apply in everything I do. So that exposure to the arts, but, but it is, you know, as a kid, you know, you grow up in a certain type situation in a family or in a society where, well, I've got to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, whatever, to really be successful. But I encourage kids, and I'm so glad that you are an artist, because I'm like, follow your dreams Sometimes the world tells you, you know, that's stupid. That's not going to be productive. You can't make a living. But I mean, you're proof to young people everywhere. Just you're leading this amazing life. Thank you. You know, thank you for that. There, there's so many thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so one is you have people don't see that the... the the backstories of how many times I was so close to quitting. Yeah. Be, so even last week, so I, I just came back from TED conference where it is the most inspiring group of people. You never know if you're going to talk to an astronaut or an artist or, and before that I, I, I was praying to God. I'm like, am I on the right path? I don't know. Should I be an artist? Like it's the, 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 there is a lot of, I would say, struggle and hardship yeah. because I also don't fit in an ordinary artist box. Like I am creating my own path because I'm not in a traditional artist. I don't, my, my aspirations isn't to be museum acquired and be at this top gallery. That would be lovely if it happens as a byproduct, but I want to use art as a revolutionary tool for us all from the spectrum of healing to innovation. Yeah. And I want to shift energy so people can right here, see and love themselves. So where do I fit in? I don't really fit in anywhere. So I, so it becomes a lonely journey, but then the beautiful thing, cause lot, for, I'll just say God for, in my, in my context, but for whatever a person believes in, whether universe, et cetera, but I, I you know, pray to God and he's always speaking. So I was, I was, um, Praying, should I continue on this path? Like, is this my purpose? Am I using my gifts in the best way? And then all of a sudden that day, I remember I got, I, I, I was at a restaurant and someone stopped me and said, are you Aida Murad? I said, yes. They were like, I, we, I came to your exhibit in 2016 in Washington, D.C. And this is in L.A. And she said, since our meeting you, I started painting and now I have my dad painting as well. And you've really impacted me. And I just like, that was a small sign from, from the universe is telling yeah. me, 
you're creating a difference. And this is part of leadership is you never know the ripple effects that you're having. Um, and the final thing I'll say around just, just what, what you just said, we have a lot of work to do yes. around changing this, uh, the societal narratives around being an artist. So before I die, I really hope I make some shift in the space of, you know, being an engineer and being a doctor and being an artist are not on the same level. No. They may all be valued and appreciated close to the same amount. I don't think they are, but let's just say if they are, but they're not sustainable. And like being an artist isn't as career wise, as stable as being an engineer. And I, I believe that we are shifting towards a world where they are stable and people are being educated to understand art is not just about a beautiful object on the wall. It is the common language that brings us also together. Uh, yeah. I remember when, when uh, refugees weren't allowed into the country for a period of time, in the U.S., I helped organize the first festival to celebrate refugees' talents in the creative industries. And we picked visual art, food, music, and dance. And the reason we picked these is because, okay, we may speak different tongue languages. Yeah. But we all speak food. We all speak art. We all speak dance. And it's something like that binds us together unites us so i'm going to stop talking from that but there's just oh, <laughs> we can no. go so many directions <laughs> no but man I, it, it, there is you know we talked about before coming on that spiritually i know that we were meant to have this conversation today and we are so on the same page and i tell people that all the time you know society would tell you we're so divided but it's like here in augusta we have a festival called arts in the heart of augusta that celebrates culture, diversity, it's food, dance, you know, music and everything. And it brings over 90,000 people. Actually, last year was over 100,000 people to our urban core over a three-day period. And I'm like, that's what our community looks like to me. And But you got, if all you see is, you know, your TV set or what you're looking at online, but to be doing a benefit like that, and to be out there with people from all walks of life, there's just such good energy in that. And I tell people, I'm like, when you go to a concert, you're there to enjoy the music. You don't give a damn about anybody's politics there. You know, so it's it's this connection point. But that's what you're doing with your art. And I just love the healing aspect of it because this world needs healing. And I'm so we're so much alike. There are times... I mean, I know that God called me to bring people together on common ground mm -hmm. and to use every platform I have to do that. But there have been times I'm 55 years old now and I'm like, well, I don't fit in with, you know, my buddies that are, you know, in real estate development or doctors or lawyers. But it's like fitting in is not as important as it is to belong. And I feel mm -hmm. like meeting people like you, we belong to the same tribe which I love. So interesting. You say the word belonging and also this, the timing of this, you know, interview is so, and meeting you is, is, is divinely timed for me because even this morning I woke up and I'm like, am I making a difference? I have no idea. Do I really matter? I don't know. I, so, and, and this is where I really believe we all, I mean, I know we all ask these questions, whether we vocalize them or not. Yeah. And we have a mental health crisis going on in this world. Oh my and gosh. And we all want to feel like we belong. That's it. And I'm, I'm really fascinated by trees and roots and I use them a lot in my art. I developed this technique. One day I'll have you at my studio, but you'll see my paintings have roots all over them. And the reason... I connect with roots is because so in trees, when one tree needs nourishment and the other trees are strong, the other strong trees send nutrients through the roots to the tree that is struggling. Yep. And I am blown away by that concept because I keep asking, why can't we as humans do that for each other? 
And if we did, I mean, what would the world would look so different? I'm curious your thoughts on that. I, I totally agree. And, you know, that is the purpose of my life. And I've been so blessed, you know, from a resource perspective, from just God giving me these amazing opportunities to communicate. And, you know, it's poetic irony that you you made mention before coming on that my voice being heard by so many people, I'm like, well, the irony of ironies, when my voice is being heard at a greater level than ever before, I am struggling with my voice. And we can talk about that a little bit. But but I know God gave me the ability to communicate and to make people feel special. And that's so, it's like I tell people with this show, that's, I think that's my superpower is making, setting people at ease. Mm-hmm. So at the grassroots level, I love engaging. And I just love, and I tell people the story. I, I was born in Canada, moved to Georgia, a shy four-year-old Canadian kid. And I know what it's like to feel like you don't fit in. So my whole life, I've always wanted to make people feel like, not that they just fit in, but that they belong. Mm. And that's, you know, for us to connect today is just, I know it was divine intervention that it was supposed to happen, but for our viewers and listeners, describe your art. I mean, I know it's hard to describe it, but I just, looking over your shoulder, looking at everything, it's just, it's so beautiful and so it just engenders in me sort of a sense of peace and tranquility and nourishment, as you say. So you're the big tree that's nourishing people through your <laughs> nutrients around you through the roots of your artwork. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, so I'll start with saying, I actually would love to describe the first moment I picked, I, I started painting because I feel that so often we forget that we have a unique fingerprint. And I remember when I learned that my, my body was, was having, so bo- my bones were eroding, which means they were, they were slowly wilting away uh, b- due to the, the, the severe arthritis, right? And at the same time, I was applying for jobs and I was so depressed and I didn't have the language for depression yeah. or any mental health kind of spectrum so this was a new being and I just I just asked God like why am I here like why am I on earth and then I just heard a whisper of you like I remember a reminder that I have a unique fingerprint so I ended up getting paint and I said maybe if I paint over and over and over with my fingerprint I will remember or unlock the reason as to what makes me unique and why I'm here so fast forward 10 years, you know, I did find that answer, right? For me, it's art. And I realized like I shift energy of people and places through my art. I paint primarily with my eyes closed, uh, only with my fingers, sometimes my forearms. And my favorite quote is man plans, God laughs. Uh, because every time yes. speak, I've had to, I, I, I thought I had a vision of what the painting would look like. It looks terrible. So I just learned, like, I just need to be the vessel and empty myself and allow for the beautiful creations to come through me. So I've developed techniques to not be in my head and rather be in my spirit and my heart. And, and, and again, in this modern world, we're so trained to be in our head. We are not in balance. The mind has, the mind has a special role and an important one, but it is um, unbalanced between our, our heart and our body connection. So I actually paint seven to eight at the same time, sometimes up to 13 paintings, because it, I enter this form of orchestra. And I feel, and I feel the painting to my left and then somehow I shift to the painting on the right and then in the middle. And so they're all like, I create brothers and sisters within the paintings because sometimes I put like, let's say yellow and green on, on the painting on my left. And then all of a sudden I feel the other two paintings need to, um, become in contact. And then what was on the left painting now is on the right painting, the green and the yellow. 
So it's, it's, they're all meant to, again, shift energy and they have seven to eight layers each. And that fosters that feeling of never needing to reach an outcome, if that makes sense. Like I just know when it's done. Um, and they all have a story and an intention. I'm last thing I'll say about that is I'm a Reiki master. So that means it's, it, Reiki is a Japanese form of healing. Yeah. And I used to do it on people, animals, and plants. And now I just do it on my art because I've had so many stories where people have been in high stress levels, have been diagnosed with different diseases or are trying to have a baby and, and I've been struggling with it. So it's impacting them. They've, we found the right painting for them. And this is, I didn't look for these testimonials. They just send them to me yeah. saying, Aida, our stress levels significantly decreased between quarter and quarter. And now I'm the artist in residence at Georgetown University for their cancer center. I get messages from cancer patients who say, you know, today I chose to sit under the green garden of hope one because I felt a bit of anxiety and that one made me feel I was just in a oasis. Uh, they didn't use the word oasis, they used a different word, but similar. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just stop there. Uh, well, you know, for our viewers and listeners, I, I've said that you were, we were supposed to connect today and I don't know that I'm ready to break big news just yet, but uh, that is impressive what you're doing at Georgetown. And as we go along, I mean, at one, some point, you know, my viewers and listeners will understand why we were supposed to be together today. But there's something else that I want to ask you about. You're one of the first fellows for the Artivism Workshop or Fellowship under the Global Nonprofit Seeds of Peace. Mm -hmm. So you're, I mean, you're out there working to create peace in the world, which I love that. Thank you. Yeah, Seeds of Peace, it's such an honor to be a fellow there. So as background, my my grandparents came from Palestine. So I was raised in Jordan. But as many viewers may know, uh, Israel and Palestine have had history of war. And Seeds of Peace is one of the leading nonprofits that brings for example, Palestinians and Israelis from a very young age, so we can explore what can new leadership look like. Yep. But it starts with what would be the new narrative? What is the new story? And they realized, because this is their first artivism fellowship, they realized that they need to do that with art. Like, art transcends boundaries. Yep. And we're, when we, so in the fellowship, there are filmmakers, there's uh, visual artists like myself, there's art activators, and we come from, they're, like, they all come from different conflict zones. And again, art is a revolutionary tool. It can be used to help foster peace. So that's, that's what we're doing. We're trying to figure out, uh, we're all meeting in New York to see how can we create a large installation to remind people that we're all human. We all want a home. We all want to belong, going back to our conversation. Yep. And as humans, I think our biggest flaw is we forget. Yeah. So art is a great tool to remind people of our common truth. Well, and that's to me, once again, as I say, if you view the world through the lens of your TV set or your computer, you're just going to see, I mean, for the most part, division. But I'm like, I don't know how many people that I know realize that there are efforts like that going on in the Middle East. And you have mm -hmm. Daniel Lebetsky, the founder of Starts With Us, started the One Voice Movement in the Middle East in 2002 to bring together Palestinians and Israelis. They have moderate that want to see an established Palestinian state and secure peace for Israel, they have 750,000 members of that movement now. And I know, you know, with what's going on right now, you know, people think, oh, it's just the Israelis and Palestinians are horribly at odds and they always will be. 
But to my mind, when you see a new generation saying, no, how do we work together? But you're never going to get peace unless you work for peace. And you are working for peace. So God bless you and the work of Seeds of Peace. That's awesome. Thank you. Can I? So there's one thing. It's interesting. So sometimes when we think about really macro things, it's, it, it may seem hard to think about the micro wants and desires of ourselves. But this is where I'm also, I also advocate for us to foster the dreaming muscle. So Deke, my favorite question to ask is, what if life could be better than you imagined it to be? I'll repeat it. What if life could be better than you imagined it to be? And the reason it's my favorite question is because I realized we have an imagination deficit. Yeah. We don't have enough time to move out of survival to thriving mode. And part of and it doesn't have to relate to finances. I know people who are incredibly wealthy who are in survival mode because they yeah. haven't you know dreamed of oh could I could, whatever whatever they're looking for. So what I always encourage is is now developing habits to sit with your dreaming muscle. And that is like any muscle. You can't, you don't just run a marathon overnight. You work on building it. And that's where art comes in. So I, I design art journeys where people also paint with their body. And I'll explain why it's so important to, for the body to be in, included. It's because we're so disconnected from it. And the body also contains so much wisdom as well as trauma. So we have all experienced different maybe shades of trauma and spectrum, but they, the body keeps the score. If you've heard of the book. Um, yeah. So what I encourage people to, to create several canvases, one that talk that you can express what you're feeling right now. And then another canvas to say, okay, what if it was a little better? And you, you, you paint how that feels or how that looks. And then third canvas, okay, this is really out of my comfort zone. But like, how amazing would it be if I fell in love tomorrow? And what? In three months, I'm, this is what I really want. (laughs) 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 I'm excited for partnership. And what if in three months, we just decide like, we don't need to overthink this. This is, this is a person I want to spend my life with. He feels at home and, oh, my body feels a little tense because this feels scary because it's, you know, a dream and, and, and I don't want to be disappointed. So then I yeah. shut down and I go back to my present moment. So <laughs> this is where people, I've worked with people where they paint their dream scenario and they hang it in front of them and they do habit stacking where, okay, every time they look at that painting, they trigger a new affirmation, the same one for several, like several months until it's a reality. So, you know, I just encourage, even when we're dreaming of big things like peace between Israel and Palestine, it's so important to also like nourish ourselves and dream of our micro lives and how it could be even better. Exactly. Well, as we get towards the end and you, I mean, Thank you for sharing your wisdom. You're obviously wise beyond your years. But uh, but uh, just a couple questions. First off, a little birdie told me you did the Kelly Clarkson show last week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, how am I going to measure up to Kelly Clarkson? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Kelly Clarkson. She She got me through some really... Tough times. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just shared a little bit about my story uh, and it was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> well, well deserved recognition. Thank so, you. for our listeners and viewers, where can we could go on all day? So, this is going to be first of many installments. And I mean, I think this is the building of a w- wonderful friendship and I potential so. collaboration. But where can our viewers and listeners find you? Oh, well, uh, they can go to my website at aidamurad.com, which is A-I-D-A-M-U-R-A-D.com. And I'm also on Instagram. I'm actually quite 
active there. So it's no, I'll follow you on Instagram. (laughs) Good good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, uh, yeah, it's, so it's uh, Instagram is Murad Aida, so M-U-R-A-D-A-I-D-A. Uh, and I'd love to be in touch with your viewers. And, and I always love hearing from people. I had one nine-year-old in Jordan send me a message of his translation of my art. He made his own version of different pieces, and it was quite beautiful. So I encourage people to share what they feel. Well, my final question is, on a daily basis, what puts a smile on your face and brings joy to your heart? Mm. Coming on my show. I'm, <laughs> I, I, that's honestly what I thought today, right now. I just thought like being here, I, I couldn't, I can't imagine of a better way to, to have started my day because it's, it's 8 a.m. here in L.A., I, I, I mean, it's conversations like this, to be honest, that keep me going. And that like I'm leaving this conversation with hope, me with too. a deeper sense of belonging. And I have to go back to the hope part because I feel like I'm not doing this alone. And also, for some reason, I feel seen with you, which feels really beautiful so I think it's conversations like this. So thank you for nourishing and making my day. Uh, I will. It will be in my ref- end of day reflections well, <laughs> in my journal. <laughs> I just here again. I just know that we were supposed to connect, and I, I just I sense this is going to be a wonderful friendship, collaboration, whatever. But it's I just the that. start. And so thank you for starting my week off in a wonderful way. I mean, this has just been. An amazing time. Thank you for having me. And I can't, I'm, I do feel as well, it's going to be a beautiful friendship and who knows collaborations in, in magical ways. Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we've got. So we are dropping the mic or the pen and we are out. Hey guys, thanks for listening to or watching the Changemaker podcast today. Greatly appreciate it. If you're listening and you want to see the video, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Deke Copenhaver. That's a pretty, pretty easy to remember, I would think. But really, we also want to remind you to like, subscribe, rate across all platforms, download. And if you're looking for a coach, a speaker, or anything, you know where to find me. Just email me at me at deekcopenhaver.com. And thanks so much for listening.